Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Robert Morris here. You know me, you've seen me, but this is not a, um, a Rob review or a show like I normally do <clears throat> on WHIG. Today, I want to bring to you something special, something that may turn into and has the very possibility of turning into um, a show about overcoming, a show about of achievement, a show about chasing dreams and seeing them become reality. And we talk a lot about that on the Rob Review, but these stories are not mine. These stories are stories of students like Gregor that I have over here. He's going to come off stage in just a minute. Their stories are inspirational beyond belief, and they can, they can speak to you in a way that I can't because, look, I was born here in America. I had everything at my disposal to achieve what I wanted to achieve when I decided to go outside of my comfort zone to achieve it. These gentlemen, these students here, many of them on campus, like Gregor here, are from countries that, I mean, thousands of miles that they had to travel just to get here to begin to chase their dream. That roadblock alone is something that you can learn from. And so I'm going to bring Gregor up here. And Gregor, come on. And before I, I, I just want, first of all, he's much taller than me. And so, you know, maybe y'all can learn something from how he carries himself here. Gregor has a great story to share with y'all. And we've worked on it for many weeks now, trying to just kind of fine tune it. I didn't take his story and change it. I just wanted him to be able to deliver it to really impact somebody out there. And I want y'all to really pay attention because what this is, is this is Gregor's story, but it's channeled through TV so that you can get something out of it, so that you can take a nugget that you can apply to your life. Because as you chase your dreams, as Gregor knows, you go after something and you've got this burning desire inside of you to have it, to have it, to have it. And when you obtain it, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal, which means you never really obtain it. So when you think you obtain it, sometimes God can take it and twist it and change it. And you can either stay there in the hole, mm -hmm. which you didn't. You can pick yourself up and you can realize a better life than you ever thought possible. And that's what I want him to share with you. So I'm going to step aside here and I'm going to listen myself and take notes. I want you all to listen to this guy's story, Gregor. This is your stage. Yes, buddy. sir. Have Thank fun. you, Robert, for this kind introduction. And if you guys bear with me for 10 minutes, I will tell you a story how I lost my identity as a tennis player, but found my true passion and purpose in life. So since I was a little boy, I had this dream to come to the States to live out the American dream, leaving everything behind, my family, my friends, to make it big on my own. Playing college tennis was an important part of my dream, and the ticket, what got me here. So here I am in the States, living my dream by being in the States, playing tennis for a prestigious college and studying abroad. I feel great, I feel invincible. I mean, how would you feel if a dream you were chasing for is finally coming true after facing obstacles and adversities along the way? My ego felt invincible. And with this attitude, I went in our first official tennis practice. 10 minutes into warming up, you might resonate with the fact we want to show off, we want to show our peers what we bring to the table. So 10 minutes into practice, there was one particular forehand where I won perhaps a little bit too eager to the ball, because this forehand, I was hitting a million times before, but this forehand caused me to the knees. I felt an intense pain in my lower left back. I couldn't continue. Teammates came over to me and said, Gregor, what is going on? You can't continue? I couldn't. I had to stop immediately and ended up in the doctor's office. In his office, the doctor did some checks on me. And he came back with the news that playing tennis ever again will be questionable. It took me a while to realize that my dream and the reason I came to the States is falling apart. In the blink of my eye, vanished. I mean, how would you feel if a dream you were chasing for is fading away? I was devastated, but I refused to let me down. I had to undergo a complete teardown of my identity to fully live out my true potential. But before we go into that, let me tell you what brought me to the States and how this journey unfolded. So here I am in Germany with the dream to go to the States. But sometimes dreams just stay dreams. Why? We are afraid to go into the unknown, we are comfortable where we are, or we are just afraid of failure. 
In my case, I was afraid to go into the unknown, letting everything behind. I didn't know what expect me. And I was comfortable. I had no need to leave my comfort zone. I had a girlfriend. I graduated from high school. Hence, I started my studies in Germany. But funnily enough, shortly before I graduated, I have to thank God that my girlfriend broke up with me. I'm not saying this in a bad manner. I appreciate everything we have experienced together. But thanks to this breakup, it was time for a choice. Should I self-pity myself about my broken heart? Or would I follow through with my heart's desire? I mean, what would you do? I followed through. I got in contact with an agency, which helped me to find a college abroad. And here is what life did to me, guys. Life gave me a clear vision of my future home. It should be a small college, surrounded by nature, and in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Anyways, this process takes time. And funnily enough, throughout my studies, I met someone who was about to open a company. And he wanted me on board. I was surprised but or not, but also worried if this could contradict with my dream. So I told him everything, full disclosure about my dreams and plans. He just said, no problem at all. We will see what will happen. So after graduation, I had nothing to do except playing tennis and practicing my English. Hence, I gave it a try. And I liked the company so much that I even invested a little bit of my own money. Pretty exciting, don't you think? Being financially involved for a company for whom you're working with 22, definitely something unusual. Anyways, time passed and on a cold Monday morning, I received a phone call from my agency. They said, Gregor, we might have the perfect fit for your requirements. Your future dream school could be North Carolina Wesleyan University in Rocky Mount. You know what happened after I heard this name? I got goosebumps all over my skin. I felt an energy running through my body I can't explain in words. But it was a sensation of a calling. A calling that I find something bigger than myself over there. That I will find something would help me to live out my true potential. I mean, would you listen to your feelings? Would you make a life decision on your gut feeling? I agreed immediately. I went all in. I knew this is the right place for me. I trusted myself. Many people don't trust themselves. I trusted myself and agreed it immediately. Decision was made. One step away for my dream come true. I had to talk to my boss. And as you can imagine, it is not that exciting to talk to your boss that you are going to leave the company. So I was nervous, but determined. So I scheduled a meeting with him for the following day. So here I am in his office, pouring out my heart. Why? Because I saw him and see him as a friend. So I told him how much this opportunity means for me. I told him how proud I am of my own self that I finally listened to my heart's desire. Anyways, after I issued out my heart, it seemed like he didn't care at all. The only thing he was saying was, Gregor, listen carefully. The company is skyrocketing at the moment. And you are one of the most important employees I have. I can't let you go. Listen, if you stay, you will get promoted immediately. What means? Double salary, company car, and apartment downtown. After he said that, he dismissed me and gave me day for consideration. What? What did he say? This night I didn't find any sleep. I mean, would you find sleep if there's this offer which can change the whole course of your life? I mean, on one hand, my dream was one step away. On the other hand, this offer was financially tempting. I knew God, life, or the universe, however you want to call it, was testing me. And the question was easy. Gregor, what do you want? Listening to your heart's desire or succumbing to financial temptations? I listened to my heart's desire. I followed through. And since I got to the States, everything, everything has been for the good. The people I met, 
the opportunity I got, and yes, even the injury, turned out to be the sky's blessing. You might say, Gregor, 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 wait, wait, wait. You suffered so much mentally, physically. You lost your identity as a tennis player. How can you see something good in that? I proclaim, we cannot control life, but we can control the choices we make to change our lives. So yes, I suffered a lot. Yes, I lost my identity. But thanks to all of this, I could experiment with my interests. I attended leadership courses, opened up a club on campus, and organized public speaking events. The side effect of experimenting with my interests were that out of the nowhere, out of the blue, I got elected as junior leader of the year, received the invitation to a private, prestigious fraternity, and became awarded with a scholarship. I'm telling you this to prove you that by being open for new things, experimenting with your interests, and taking risks, life will take you a long way. <laughs> so when life gives you a lemon, make a lemonade out of it. Remember, you cannot control life, but you can control the choices you make to change your life. So that is my story, and I hope you can get something out of it. That's a great story, Gregor. <laughs> don't, don't go anywhere. Look, I want you to stand right here with me for a second, okay? <laughs> Um, first of all, thanks for sharing that, really. Um, Y'all have no idea how much time he's put into this. Now, really, I don't, because I haven't been with him every second that he's been working on. No. But he has been working diligently. <clears throat> Not because he wanted to stand on stage and, and, and have his moment of you know 15 minutes of fame, but because he wanted to share a story uh, with people out there that could benefit from it, right? Yes, sir. Tell me. I just got a couple questions for you. I want to know what motivates a student like you who's got all this other stuff going on. Because I think people can get something from this. When everybody out there thinks they're so busy, they're too busy to do more for, mm. for, for another person. Mm. What motivates you and how do you get up and get time to, to do all these things that you've, that you've done since, since you... Since you had your injury, you could just go mm -hmm. right back to school. But you're not only a good student, you have been able to start all these positive clubs. Tell me how you keep your mindset positive. Mindset, good question. I mean, there was the option of staying in the whale of negativity and depression, and I was there. I stayed in this whale. But it, it took me a while to come out, and the best way to come out of this whale was being active, massive, massive action, being engaged on campus, helping other people, improving other people's life. And this was, to be honest, my fuel to come out of my own depression, to come out of my own way. I mean, I came the all the way from Germany to the States to live. I had just tennis in my mind mm -hmm. and this got vanished. Mm -hmm. So I was devastated. Mm -hmm. But I came out of the world when I saw, okay, I could impact other people by opening a club. I could impact other people by sharing the story. I could impact people by just telling what I went through and other people can resonate with it and learn from my stories. They don't have to go through the same path, but they can just learn what I've, I've learned without going through all the suffering. So this was like the main motivation for me. And what was the moment you think you realized that you could do that? Because there was a moment between when you came to see me and, and, and when you had all this other stuff. I mean, there, was a, there, was, there had to be a moment. What, what occurred in your mind to say, hey, I'm going to, step outside my comfort zone and do this? <laughs> to be honest, it was more like energy I felt I had to release. Oh. I would perhaps say, as well calling, perhaps God wanted me to express what I felt. God wanted me to share how I went through all the suffering to all this pain. And I'm just saying, I'm expressing my energy, what I feel in my body. So it wasn't just a moment. It was multiple occasions where you felt that you needed to do this. Yes, definitely, definitely. See, that's an interesting point, ladies and gentlemen, because I've talked to you all the time about this false belief, I believe, that's perpetuated by film that is like, hey, there's this light bulb moment of mm. where everything changes in people's lives. Mm. I believe that's, that's not the case. I believe that what happens, like with you, is you walk out the door one day after going through some massive issue mm. or a little road bump and you feel the tug do something different and you shove it off. Yes. And then you feel it again and you shove it off again. And at some point you either decide, okay, this tug keeps coming back. I'm going to do something yes. about it. Or you lay it back in your trunk and forget about it. And mm. that's where people throw their dreams away. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And then you regret it. 
it came, it came, it came, and if you don't listen to it, and then following through, you will regret it. And this is what I think should we encourage people. Right. Listen to what your body say, listen to what your heart is saying, and then don't, do, don't overthink too much. Just do it. Just do it, and as you do the action, the, the roadmap will then unfold for you. Yes, sir. And you will begin to step and step and step. It's it's by faith that you move. And regardless of your religious beliefs, I'm not trying to push mine on mm -hmm. you. I'm just saying that there is elements in this world of whatever you want to call it, your gut feeling of you need to do something different. Some have it, some don't. Some are beneficial in the way that they find their purpose like that. But some of you that are watching this, you've been having that tug for a long time, right? And I think that if you got anything out of what Gregor said today, it's time to just step forward mm. and step outside your comfort zone. Because yes. ultimately, look, and I've told you this story before, and I'll close with this. Everything I live today, not just possessions and things, but how I live, the life that I have, the wife that I have, all occurred because I decided to step outside of a comfort yes. path that ultimately at the time nobody said was a good idea. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing. And that's what through, if, if this young gentleman who's still in college can do it, then, then, then you all who have so many other things and tools at your disposal can do it. And so, my only, yes, my only closing statement would be like, as you said, real transformation and growth starts in our, not in our comfort zone, but if we go out of our comfort zone, if we go into the unknown, real growth and transformation resides there. That's the only thing I have to say. That's right. Growth resides in pushing yourself beyond where you're comfortable. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully we'll do more of these. <laughs> hopefully we'll have Gregor back. Maybe he'll bring some friends on that have other stories. Um, and I think you'll be seeing Gregor again. So look, I, I appreciate I think your so too. time. I think, I think you, Robert. Right. Appreciate your time. And yeah. All right, have a good day, ladies and gentlemen.